The Art of Russ Nicholson. The Scottish illustrator Russ Nicholson left us on the 10th of May 2023 this year. And it is a great loss. His work is well known to many of us with a love of all things within the fantasy genre, and his black and white fantasy art is breathtakingly striking and evocative. Nicholson first became noticed as an important fantasy artist with the first of the fighting fantasy series of gaming books, The Warlock of Firetop Mountain, by Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston, and he illustrated 17 books in this illustrious series. This first book was how I first encountered his art, and I fell in love with its classical yet distinctive style. During the rest of the 80s, I also encountered his work via Games Workshop, as it adorned many Warhammer Fantasy and 40k books, and featured in White Dwarf and I was always, without fail, struck by each piece. I shall talk more about him and his work in the next video, but in the interim you can find a huge swathe of his pictures on his blog, link in the description below. And I have certainly got to admit, I've spent quite a bit of time there perusing his uh, pieces of art. Anyway, in this first video of a somewhat unplanned series, I want to go back to the Warlock of Firetop Mountain and share a piece of his art from the book. But I also want to do this by showing it in context, as I encountered it as a child, and thus allowing it to breathe. So, let's play a game. Enjoy the art, listen to the accompanying words, and then let us know what to do next as we both explore Russ's art and explore Firetop Mountain. The Warlock of Firetop Mountain At last, your two-day hike is over. You unsheath your sword, lay it on the ground, and sigh with relief as you lower yourself down onto the mossy rocks to sit for a moment's rest. You stretch, rub your eyes, and finally look up at Firetop Mountain. The very mountain itself looks menacing. The steep face in front of you looks to have been savaged by the claws of some gargantuan beast. Sharp, rocky crags jut out at unnatural angles. At the top of the mountain, you can see the eerie red colouring. Probably some strange vegetation which has given the mountain its name. Perhaps no one will ever know exactly what grows up there, as climbing the peak must surely be impossible. Your quest lies ahead of you. Across the clearing is a dark cave entrance. You pick up your sword, get to your feet, and consider what dangers may lie ahead of you. But with determination, you thrust the sword home into its scabbard and approach the cave. You peer into the gloom to see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. You light your lantern and step warily into the blackness. Cobwebs brush your face and you hear the scurrying of tiny feet. Rats, most likely. You set off into the cave. After a few yards, you arrive at a junction. 